morning. Here's what's going on at Risen Savior this week. King's Kids Family Bowling Night is this Wednesday starting at 6.30. There are forms available at the information table. See Sarah Ashbrenner if you have any questions. The junior youth and their parents will be hosting a Mother's Day flower and treat sale on May 10th. Free will offerings will be accepted. Contact Set in the church office if you have questions. I'm here with Chris and she's going to tell us a little bit about the LWML dinner that's coming up. Hi everyone, I'd like to invite everybody to our LWML Sowing Seeds of Kindness Women of Faith Dinner. It's Wednesday, May 13th at 6 p.m. All you have to do is invite all of your lady friends to come and contact Set Set Off in the office to RSVP or if you have any questions. Hope to see you there. Our closing event for Wednesday evening activities is May 6th. This is a family event. Bring your whole family and there's pizza, so be sure to sign up at the information table. One of our members, Desmond, is nine years old and is receiving treatments at Children's Mercy in Kansas City. Please join us by making a free will donation for a bracelet for Desmond's Cure and wear it as a reminder to pray for Desmond and his family. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next week.
Good morning. The video's there to remind us about name tags. I see you're all wearing yours. No, that's not what the video's about. The video's to remind us of the fact that we all get labeled, don't we? Sometimes well-deserved, sometimes not so deserved. So today, God wants us to know the name that we really need to be wearing. His. Let's rise as we worship Him. We begin our service as we do all things in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Ever one God? World without end. Listen to His Word. It's going to show us how powerful wearing His name really is. Sing to the Lord, you saints of His. Praise His holy name. I will give thanks to the Lord because of His righteousness. And we'll sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praise to your name, O Most High. Some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We wait in hope for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. In Him our hearts rejoice, for we trust in His holy name. I will praise you forever for what you have done. In your name I will hope, for your name is good. I will praise you in the presence of your saints. Praise be to His glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with His glory. Amen and amen. Let's praise his name.
and merciful God, we are so thankful that you revealed your glory and power to the apostles so that they could record accounts we have in scripture. We desire to not only hear your word, but also yearn to listen with open ears so that we will grasp your will for our lives. As we engage in worship today through prayer, song, and the word, help us to be attentive to the saving power of Jesus Christ. Instill in us the love of Christ, that we may love one another as he has commanded us. Focus our minds and hearts so that we will listen to the voice of God, who knows each of us so well. In the powerful name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Just kind of looking in. How many of you have been watching the AD, the uh, TV series that's coming on Sunday nights? Yeah, it's just kind of been interesting to see how they're portraying it. We're going to be picking up later on with a Bible class going into it itself. But just watching how these disciples were so fearful, so scared, and, and just unable to really function. And then all that changed when they saw the risen Lord. This is the text of what's going on with A.D. right now. See why they had all this boldness from Acts chapter 4. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people and proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John, and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed, and the number of men grew to about 5,000. The next day the rulers, elders, and teachers of the law met in Jerusalem. Annas the high priest was there, and so were Caiaphas, John, Alexander, and the other men of the high priest's family. They had Peter and John brought before them and began to question them. By what power or what name did you do this? Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people, if we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple and are asked how he was healed, then know this, you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead, that this man stands before you healed. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the capstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to the men by which we must be saved. You know, the beautiful thing is they asked, they knew that this power, this, this boldness was not the same Peter they had seen before. It was noticed. I think it's noticeable in us too. The power of God through him. Well, that's why John lays it out in this beautiful way. How do we really get a hold of it? 
1 John 3. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need, but, do, but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions and in truth. This, then, is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and He knows everything. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from Him anything we ask because we obey His commands and do what pleases Him. And this is His command, to believe in the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and to love one another as He commanded us. Those who obey his commands live in him and he in them. And this is how we know that he lives in us. We know it by the spirit he gave us. We know he lives in us. This is where we all go, right. How does he live in us? Let's rise. Because he's going to show us. The Gospel of John chapter 10. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down, lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen I must bring them also they too will listen to my boys and there sh shall be one flock and one shepherd the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again no one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again this command I receive from my father I know my sheep doesn't stop there does it my sheep know me. And we listen to his voice. How are we doing? Let's talk to him about it. Father, in the words of your prophet Isaiah, you described our condition. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. You sent your son to be our good shepherd. Draw us into a deeper relationship with you as we confess that at times we are preoccupied with the things of the world rather than worshiping and praising you, the one true God and Father of us all. We tend to listen to the voices of the world rather than your voice. We have chosen to act as our own shepherd. We have abandoned the green pastures and still waters you have prepared in a search for shallow satisfaction. We have wandered off the path of righteousness and have tried to go it alone. We have ignored the table you have prepared and have attempted to anoint ourselves with oil of earthly pleasures. We have not always recognized your goodness and mercy following us in all of our days. For the sake of your name, O oh Lord, forgive my iniquity, though it is great.
23rd Psalm, known by virtually everybody, and yet confused by so many people too. I mean, we know the words, right? On this journey called life, how, how we know the voice of the Good Shepherd, and we, uh, <clears throat> what's that next part? Anybody know? We follow Him. 
I mean, we know the stuff, and we know that if we listen to him, and, and he, he's going to do all this stuff, and, and he wants to bless our lives, but do you think he really has our best interests at heart? Do you? You know, this is one of those days of the good shepherd and, and understanding an identity of who we are and, and who we're not. And it's really kind of tough because this is one of those kind of overcast days and a lot of us did a lot of work yesterday and used some muscles we hadn't used for a long time and it's just kind of... <sighs> so I want to give you another part of today that, that I think we really need. If you look at your bulletin, you know what Sunday this is? We're still in Easter. He's risen! He's risen indeed. Hallelujah. That still works. <laughs> the journey we're on, this, this inch of life, this time, and, and trying to understand all the stuff that we need to be doing and not be doing, takes us into a concept of, of understanding who we really, really, truly are. And, and that's kind of the question of the video asked earlier on about what name do you have? What's your name today? You know, I think back to uh, the time of naming our kids, and it took me back to the time when my parents named me. And I asked them, I don't know how many times, why they named him what they did. Thomas? Did they think I was going to be a twin? Did they think I was going to be a doubter all my life? Well, maybe. Or, or maybe they just had it in for me. I, I found this. It's just so true. <laughs> Ever feel that way? You know, I, I look at people and I, I begin to understand that sometimes we start to live out our names. We really do. We end up getting our middle names usually from one of our relatives, right? And I wish my relative didn't have that middle name. <laughs> but then we turn to our last names and we start to realize Harmon, Harmony. I'm someone who likes peace. Yeah, kind of works that way. But, um, Sometimes we just are given names, and sometimes we earn our names. Do you suppose this kid earned a name? You see, who are we listening to? What voice is really calling us in life to do what we are supposed to be doing is, is a challenge that we have, because all we like sheep have a tendency to go astray. But we're not sheep, are we? Or maybe we are. I wonder why I don't hear from the shepherd anymore. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them. And they follow me. You know, when I was looking for images of the way it's supposed to work, uh, I didn't have to look all that far because even though we don't see it here in this part of Kansas, the reality of the shepherd and the sheep is one that really is so vivid and why the Good Shepherd Psalm is such a powerful, powerful psalm. You notice where the sheep are? They're following. Why? They know his voice. Yeah, it's more than just knowing his voice. They know everything about him because he's the one who protects them. He's the one who cares for them. He's the one who, they know him. And so they follow him. I worked on several different farms that raised cattle growing up. And uh, I don't know, as I look around the congregation and realize we're really not an ag-based community, but do cattle... Follow? No, they don't. You get behind them and you, you herd the cattle in a different way. Except an illustration I want to tell you about. 
Some of you know that Arlita, my wife, um, grew up on a dairy farm. Her dad had a cow. He had lots of cattle, don't get me wrong. He had one cow that thought it was his puppy. He did not herd Dolly. He walked in front of Dolly. And Dolly followed him everywhere he went. If anybody else on the farm milked Dolly other than Alvin, that cow bawled all night. It threw a fit. It was a relationship that was weird, yeah, but it was a relationship because Dolly knew him, and it, it was just one of those things that uh, the essence of what it means to know someone so well, that you trust them, you walk with them, you're encouraged by them, you know them completely because all of us are so unique. You know, we all have different thumbprints, right, or fingerprints. I read this week, we also all have different voice imprints. All unique. Created by God in a way that, that allows us to grow in Him and He in us and let things really start bonding together. That's why, well, Paul uses the phrase, in Christ, I left it blank, so you remember it. 164 times. Do you suppose he had a point that he was wanting to make about this relationship of being in Christ, being so in bonded with him? You bet he did. And this is the point. That's why he wants us to remember the title, the name that he has placed upon us. Anybody know what it is? Christian. In Italy, during the war, this statue was placed in one of the beautiful cathedrals. And during the bombings, um, a beam came down and knocked off the hands of the statue. The people of the area were so distraught by it that they, they really didn't know what to do for sure because several of them were saying, I can't imagine Jesus without hands. They had a very famous person come and say, well, I'll remake them and we'll put new hands back on him. And then somebody came up with a realization. We're supposed to be his hands. That's the job that God has given to us. To be his hands, to be his feet, to be his voice in this world. And it's not just a matter of being his hands, but to have his name put on us as a way that we realize that Jesus, the name that is above all name, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven on earth and under the earth. Why? Because we know his power, we know his strength, we know, we know what real forgiveness is when we can step out in faith and use it. Let me show you how it works. There's this guy, wanted to be a Broadway performer. <sighs> Tried out several, several times, but all the evaluations kept coming back this same way. They would say he can't act. They would say he's slightly bald. And even though he could dance a little, at least at the, what they put on it, they didn't think he was that good. You know what I'm talking about yet? So he, he decided that what he was going to do was just, he wasn't going to dance like everybody else anymore. He was going to, to do some different types of moves that... Are you there yet? Fred Astaire. Got another guy for you. This, this, this man, from the time... Well, before he was even born, he was a Christian. I mean, he, he loved the Lord, and, and just everything about his life, he wanted to, to tell people in unique ways about who God is and what God has done for us and his son. And so he started drawing little cartoons. He wasn't all that good. In fact, people said he uh, wasn't good at all. He tried to get one of them put into his uh, 
high school yearbook, and everybody said, you are never going to make it in life as a cartoonist. You are a failure. Hear the badge? Hear the name tag? You will be a failure. You got that one down yet? How'd that work for him? A couple guys said, you know what? Christians don't smile enough. You're supposed to smile. They, they don't get excited about stuff. Maybe, maybe we need to do something that will help them understand and, and put into real life, put into words what all God's doing in their lives. So that we have these God sightings, these, these opportunities to see what God does every day. Sound like a good book? They went to 140 different publishers. Didn't even know there were that many. Trying to get somebody to publish this book. Finally, it was produced. Ever read one of them? Millions and billions, kind of like McDonald's hamburgers. All that have been sold. For people to start getting the excitement of what it means to know God back into their lives. Well, what's all this got to do with what God said to us today? There were two guys, Peter and John. They were scared. You know, that really wasn't their job to, to go out and talk to people in public and do all this stuff. But something changed. He took off the name Peter and put on the name Jesus. You see what happened to his life? He's walking along and he sees this beggar, a guy that's been lame, crippled for years. He reached down to him and said, in the name of Peter. No, he didn't. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Whose name are you using today? Ever wondered why stuff don't work? What voice are you listening to? The one that reminds us of his great love? The voice of the good shepherd who wants to lead us? Hmm. There's the question. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please rise. God's peace, which really does surpass all understanding. Keep your hearts, your minds, your lives listening to the Good Shepherd. Amen. Join with me as we proclaim who He is together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and he was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. The right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Please be seated as we respond to him.
yet praise him regardless of all the stuff that comes my way whether the world devil or stuff I myself do because he's my good shepherd and he wants to guide me and he's going to use all this stuff right wow well as we come before his throne today we lift up Will Tice he uh, broke his arm yesterday I had surgery last night to put some pins and we pray God's healing grace upon him a little further away from home, but wow. Nepal. The report I got early this morning was, I believe, 1,900 killed by that earthquake. God's got a lot to work with, doesn't he? You know, the neat thing yesterday was Love, Wichita. And we had 90 people through Risen Savior. There's some bluish shirts here today. Yeah. Imagine all that God does when people join together all around and work to His glory. Let's rise as we talk to Him about it. Gracious Father, as we stand before Your throne, let us bear that reality. It's Your throne, not ours. Thank You for the privilege of being a part of Your plan. But Lord, as, as we stand... We ask that you do more than just uh, let us give you lip service. Use us to your glory. The experiences of our lives, that, that the name that we bear is, is yours. And there's power, there's boldness, there's glory in it. Lord, in your mercy. Father, when tragedies and trials come our way, we thank you for the blessing of doctors that the skills that they've been able to use and that's like Will. So many people that we've listed before you suffering from cancer in many different forms. Again, your healing graces abound. But even more so when the earth shakes, when lives are lost, there's a hope through faith alone in your Son, Jesus Christ. Father, as many are being turned toward you this day in fear and trepidation, be their peace, be their hope. 
and allow them to recognize you as Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Father, bless all who travel today, and especially Arlita as she heads to St. Louis. Allow your hand of blessing upon the National Youth Gathering as the group gathers to ascertain what all you want to have done. In the meantime, Lord, all the stuff that we bring, the good, the bad, the ugly, we lay it into your hands. Lord, that's where we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. The glory forever and ever. Amen. My sheep, listen to me. You ready to listen to what he wants? It's kind of neat. The Lord bless you, keep you. Lord, make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord is looking upon you with favor. Receive his peace. Amen. above all names, wear proudly to his glory. Um, I mentioned Arlita's on her way to St. Louis. She's the Kansas District Representative for the National Youth Gathering. 
So that's where she's going to be for the next three days. Excited about what all the youth gathering is going to be this time. Let's greet one another as we celebrate his love.